There's a big difference between becoming known and becoming respected. Don't let an algorithm convince you otherwise. I mean, I think this is probably super pertinent for for people in our position. Um, but I'll go from the internet perspective and we can circle back to IRL. Um, but I mean, a lot of people will make content. So I've, obviously I've made stuff for me too. Like talk about artists making things for themselves. Like I make most of my tweets are just like notes to self. Um, but like, if I ever feel like I have to sacrifice who I am or the values that I believe in, in order to like get more views or something like that, I see it happen more times than not because the algorithm and the views and the likes become kind of a proxy for conforming in, in their own way. Like everyone likes this type of thing, mm. do more of that. Mm. And that makes me feel very like dance monkey dance. And, um, I think there's there's few things that kill my soul more than that. And so I would rather, you know, I would rather the algorithm shut me off tomorrow and I continue to make stuff that I find interesting, that 10 people find interesting, that is actually the same stuff as me, than just have these viral hits that I feel like I'm Ronald McDonald in um, and just feel like I've completely lost my soul. And I I do think, as a side note, that if you do the first one where your intention is to maybe help find the 10 people who are really interested in your thing, you probably will create more of the viral hits. But when you solve for the other way, I think you accomplish neither. I have this theory that more creators fall out of favor because they become cringe than because they become irrelevant. I love that. You yeah, I love that. I think, it's, I think it's true. I think if you think about the thing that you do, almost anything that anybody is creating is public facing because if it wasn't public facing, it would just be a hobby doing your painting because you love painting is a hobby doing your painting to try and sell it is something that you do as a business or as a, a public project the flywheel is so vicious in the positive direction and even more vicious in the negative direction <laughs> if it becomes cancerous or uncool or untrendy or catastrophic or cringe to be seen to be watching or listening to or consuming the thing that you make it is, you are permanently going to be swimming upstream and it is only going to get worse. Which is why you look at, Shane Gillis is a really great example of this at the moment. He's someone who is great at his craft, big platform, moved to Austin, got all of the multipliers in place, but he isn't cringe. Mm -hmm. And because he's not cringe, if you've watched Beautiful Dogs, his Netflix special, mm -hmm. yeah. it's not uncool it's like there's this idea in publishing, because I've been doing my research ahead of the book. There's this idea in publishing called the subway test. Okay. Would someone be prepared to have the full dust jacket version of your book out on the subway? Okay. And if your book is like stop erectile dysfunction now. I was literally now, the erection problem, yeah, right? <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like no more flatulence today or something. Like if that's, if that's your book, it's going to be very difficult. Or if yeah. it's written by somebody where it's like, oh, really don't want to do yeah. that so and and this is the point where there are tons and tons and tons of people on the planet who have huge platforms that nobody respects mm -hmm. and i've seen even within my seven-year career of doing this the arc of people trade integrity for exposure and not be able to buy it back yeah because there is no return policy on your integrity. On your reputation. And those people would give anything to be back in the cool kids club. I, I mean, this is a, like, I love this entire train. Um, I was thinking like, what, what creates, like what's, what's timelessly not cringe, right? Like, so like if cringe is the ultimate, like what we don't want, then like, what would, what is forever not cringe? And, the only thing that I can like really th think of is is just true authenticity, which is an overused word, but again, easy to say, hard to do. I think what is what is forever cringe on the equal opposite side is is pandering. Like whenever you're seen as someone who's only doing stuff for other people's opinion, approval, likes, whatever, especially double cringe when it's for your own personal gain. And so, if the equal opposite of that is uh, something that is to my personal detriment, um, that is truly something that I believe in, it honestly doesn't matter what it is. Because there are some people that probably believe things that I don't believe, but I genuinely think, based on what I see, that they genuinely believe it, and it's and they don't really stand to gain much for believing it. Yeah. There's no cringe there. It's just like, 
that fan, that man fucking believes that. And I think that, um, some of the, you know, some of the characters in our current, you know, politosphere and things like that, like many people, you know, you say the word Trump and you have half the you know, people who hate you and the other half that love you. It's like, I think most people agree that he believes what he says. Now, whether you believe the content of what he's saying is a different story, but mo- like, I don't think many people have called him as somebody who's like, I think he's, he doesn't really think that about himself. Like, no, I think he, I think he really does. And even I'm, I'm just going to push the edges. Cause that's where you have to like explore the fringe. Look at someone like Kanye, who's been borderline canceled for, I mean, multiple times, right? But like, why is Kanye, quote, uncancelable? Because he hasn't been, right? Not really. Like, if he came out tomorrow with a hit, a, a hit album, I'll bet you it would fucking sell. <laughs> because I think that, at least for me, from what I see, I think he does what he believes. And people might be like, he's mentally unstable. There's all these other things. But like, no one thinks he's being fake. And I think that like, if that becomes the North Star of like, I just never want to become cringe, then it's just never be fake. In other news, this episode is brought to you by Marrick Health. I wanted to get my blood work done last year, and after a ton of research, I found that Marrick Health has the most sophisticated and comprehensive service in America. In fact, I loved the process so much that I reached out to the owner to partner with them on the show because that's how much I believe in their service. They don't just provide you with supplements, they also suggest lifestyle interventions, training, diet, and everything else. It really is insanely comprehensive. It's great to feel like you have someone professionally trained who is in your corner helping you to understand what's going on inside of your own body. When I started working with Marek, my testosterone was 495, which isn't super low, but isn't great. And after six months of working with them, it was at 1,006. So in less than six months, they more than doubled my testosterone without using TRT. Right now, you can get the exact same blood panel and service that I got with a 10% discount by going to the link in the description below or heading to marickhealth.com slash modernwisdom and the code modernwisdom at checkout. That's M-A-R-E-K health.com slash modernwisdom and modernwisdom at checkout. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed that clip with Alex, the full length three and a half hour podcast is right here waiting for you. Go on, tap it.